So, dear brothers, uh, last week we studied about uh, so many things. Uh, what happens after death? But after death, there is nothing. No man can come back to life uh, or come and visit their house or come and do all these things and all. Because the very day they die, their memory is totally perished and they don't remember anything. So, Satan tries to do a lot of things uh, to prove his original lie that you shall surely not die. Okay, dear brethren. So, today we are going to see some of the aspects uh, from the Bible where certain incidents are taken to prove that the soul doesn't die, the soul goes here and all. So the first incident, what we're going to study is from the book of Samuel, 1st Samuel 28 chapter. So I request uh, you to kindly read the uh, majority of the portions yourself after the class. But today we're going to see some important verses uh, which are uh, uh, very uh, important while uh, going through the class. Okay, so first Samuel 28 chapter, if you see what is the background, if you see uh, the Philistines would have come for uh, warfare uh, on the uh, Israelites, uh, and during that time, uh, King Saul was the king. And seeing this huge army of the Philistines, uh, King Saul was uh, totally, you see, uh, fearful and afraid because of that reason, you see, he takes a a very difficult and very strange decision. And during that time, we all know that uh, in the olden days, whenever a, a king has to go for a war, they usually they used to consult uh, the Lord God Almighty uh, to find out his will, whether uh, he will give the victory in the war or not. But in that incident, you see, Saul uh, went and inquired of the Lord, but the Lord did not answer him in any way. Because why, if you see, dear brethren, the Lord God Almighty, you see, had already rejected King Saul to be the king of Israel. Let us read this verse. First Samuel 28.6. Read with her. And when Saul inquired, inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. See, God did not answer by any uh, way, by dream, or Urim, or uh, prophets, and all the brethren. And moreover, at that time, you see, Samuel the prophet was already dead, and he was already buried. So, this being the case, you see, he had no other option to know the Lord's will. By that time, really, if you see, you see, God had actually uh, rejected, uh, you see, whom King uh, Saul. Why God had rejected, uh, if you see, two mistakes uh, was done by King Saul. One is that uh, he was told to wait until uh, Samuel the prophet comes. But before Samuel the prophet comes, uh, he began to offer sacrifices to the Lord. That is given to us in 1 Samuel 13 chapter, uh, 13th verse. So, there if you see, the foolish activity of Saul made him to be rejected of the Lord. So, Lord rejected him at that time. But yet, as he requested the Lord, God gave him one more opportunity. Okay? And that opportunity was uh, to kill the Amalekites. Everybody, all the male, female, animals, everything, all the living things were supposed to be killed by King Saul. But unfortunately, if you see it, you then King Saul did not, king, did not kill all the you see, animals, uh, you see, he brought all the animals uh, uh, alive uh, and uh, he also brought the king uh, of uh, Amalekites alive. Uh. When uh, Samuel the prophet uh, came and asked him, he said, no, I have done the Lord's will. Uh, then what is the meaning of all these sounds and of uh, animals? Uh, he questioned, he said, this is all for a sacrifice to the Lord. Uh, and that is the time that uh, Samuel uh, condemns uh, you see, and rebukes uh, King Saul saying, uh, the Lord is uh, not bothered about your sacrifice and all. He seeks obedience. And that is the time that uh, he was totally rejected uh, from being the king of Israel. Let us read that verse, 1 Samuel 15, 23. Muslim brother, you are there? 1 Samuel 15, 23. Only 23. Yeah, only 23. Okay. Rest of things, you can read it later. Uh, because so many points we need to cover. Uh, that's the reason. Okay. 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 For for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is an 
in QTN idolatry because though has rejected the will of the Lord, he had also rejected the from being king. Okay. Though has uh, rejected the word of God, similarly, God has rejected you from being the king of Israel. So, once God rejected him from being the king of Israel, you know what happened? God took away the Holy Spirit and the evil spirit came and disturbed King Saul. Let us read that one, brother. 1 Samuel 16, 14, brother. 1 Samuel 16, 14. Can somebody read? Hmm. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Ah, see, a evil spirit from uh, Saul, you see, came and bothered him. Imagine, now he is under the influence of an evil spirit. He is not sir, under the influence of a godly spirit. Sir, yeah? God, ah. the evil spirit comes from God. We will see all those things, I will tell you. We will listen to the subject, okay? By end, you can ask the question, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. okay. See, so what happens? God withdraws his spirit. So as soon as God withdraws his spirit, automatically you see what comes into the picture. If you see the end, the evil spirit comes and you see that keeps on disturbing King Saul. And when he was obedient, he had actually done a lot of things which are pleasing to the Lord. But once God takes away spirit, he does a thing which is very, very displeasing to the Lord. What does he do? If you see, he tries to contact a witch, a witchcraft woman. So that you know uh, what happens uh, in the war. Dear brethren, this was actually, you see, against the will of the Lord. Let us read 1 Samuel 28 7, brother. 1 Samuel 28 7. Then said Saul unto his servant. Take me a woman that had a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that has a familiar spirit and endure. You see, he tries to contact a woman who is having a familiar spirit, who can speak with the dead. You see, dear brethren, actually, this was in total violation of the Lord's law. Because when King Saul was obedient, as per the commandments of God, he had killed all these witchcrafts people. You see, that, uh, that one we can read in the uh, same chapter, verse 3. Krishna Vada, read, brother, verse 3. Uh. 23, sir. Mm. Yes. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Samuel, Saul had put away those that had tamed their spirits and the wizards out of the land. See, he was obedient. When he was obedient, he had put out all this familiar spirits. So, do, do witchcraft and out of the, you see, the city of Jerusalem, dear brethren, city of Israel. And that is the time that uh, these uh, ones, when God rejected King Saul, uh, that uh, he began to sort a woman to, you see, dear brethren, uh, who can speak with the dead. This was actually against the law of the Lord. When God gave the law to the people of Israel, when God told that uh, he is going to bring them to the promised land, that time itself, God has strictly told them that you should not follow the things which the heathen people do, that you are not going to speak with the dead. You are not going to see the persons uh, who can uh, have to speak with the dead or see visions or uh, have familiar spirits or do such wizards and all these things and all. Let us read Deuteronomy 18 chapter verses 9 to 12. Deuteronomy 18 chapter verses 9 to 12. Muslim brother, can you read? Yes, brother. When the earth came into the land which the Lord, the God given, the those shall not learn to be to do after the abomination of those nations. This shall not be found among you. Anyone that make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or the or that post divination or an observer of times or an inhector or a wit mm. or a charmer mm. or a cons consoler with familiar spirit or a wizard or a neuromancer 
for all that to this thing are an abnomination unto the Lord. And because of this abnomination, the Lord, the God don't drive them out from before the Hey, this is abomination in the sight of God. Because of this reason, God is driving away all those people out of the promised land. And God had told, once if you enter the land of Canaan, you should never do those things. And God had told them that if anybody turns to and cry with a familiar spirit, and they shall be cut off, they shall be killed for my sight. Uh, that is given in Leviticus 19, 31 and Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6. But here, if you see, when Saul was obedient, he obeyed all these commandments of the Lord. But now, now what has happened? Uh, huh? Now God has rejected King Saul and he wants to know what is going to happen if he goes to war. And that is the reason and that is the time that he goes against the will of the Lord and try to contact a witch woman to see eh, and speak to dead Samuel. You see, and that is the time that, uh, you know, you see, eh, uh, he goes to meet that uh, woman. The woman tells, okay, uh, whom do you want to bring me? Tell me, I'll bring him up. Then, uh, you see, King Saul tells, bring me up. Uh, Samuel the prophet and immediately you see that woman uh, does uh, all this uh, uh, magic all these things and all wizards and all and immediately you see she tells that uh, a old man you see is coming out of the earth you see king asks uh, tell me tell me what is happening please tell me who is coming out immediately you see and the woman tells that uh, a person who is wearing a white robe is coming. Uh, you see, that is given to us in uh, 1 Samuel 28, 14. Read with her. 1 Samuel 28, 14. Mm. And he said unto her, what form is there of? And she said, an old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel. And he stooped with his face to the ground and bore himself. You see, that uh, king uh, asked, uh, tell me what you are saying. Then uh, the woman, uh, you see, she immediately tells that uh, a old man, you see, with a mantle, uh, he is uh, coming up. Uh, and immediately, you see, uh, King Saul understood that uh, it must be Samuel, the prophet. Actually, if you observe this verse, is it given that uh, King Saul saw Samuel? No. King Saul never saw Samuel. But the way she gave the description, based upon that one, King Saul understood that the person who is coming there is none other than Prophet Samuel. Why? Because he wanted to speak to Samuel, just imagine what did the woman say? He old man is coming up with a mantle, with a robe upon him. Huh? Just imagine, there, is there no other person in Israel who is wearing a robe? Is there no old person in Israel? Huh? You see, dear brother, is it only Samuel? You see, as soon as she gave the description, here King Saul, you see, completely misunderstood it to be you see who? Prophet Samuel. You see, next what happens? Huh? Next what happens if you see, huh? then uh, that person who came and uh, who shows himself to be uh, the dead Samuel, he says, why have you disturbed me? Read verse 15, brother. Verse 15, 16. Continue with the reading. Huh? Read Krishna, brother. Yes, sir. And Samuel said to Saul, why hast thou disturbed Disquieted me to bring me up. See? And Saul answered. Ah, you see what happens? Immediately, Samuel tells, Why have you disturbed me? Why have you brought me? Huh? Here, huh? can a holy prophet be disturbed by a witch? Just imagine, can a witch disturb God's prophet and call him back to life? Isn't it? Then what did the, what was the reply? Continue with that. Huh? And I saw distress for the Philistines make a war against me 
and God is departed from me and answered me no more, neither my prophets nor by dreams. Therefore, I have called thee that thou mayst make known unto me what I shall do. See, you see, and that is the time that uh, King Saul tells, uh, what can I do? I have no other option. God has rejected me. The enemies are coming to attack me. I have no other option. Please tell me what is going to happen if I go to the war. Imagine, dear brethren, yeah, if a person who is rejected by the Lord, if he goes to the war, what will happen? What will happen? Will he win or will he lose the war? Lose the war. Lose the war. A person huh, who doesn't have God on his side, if he goes to the war, automatically what will happen? Definitely we lose the war. He won't win the war, dear brethren. And is there anything so special to go and ask to somebody else? You see, Saul himself knew that he is going to die. That is the reason he was very much afraid. But for curiosity's sake, dear brethren, he went and contacted the witch. You see, and that is the time when you see, what does Samuel say? Read with her, verse 19. First Samuel 28, 19. Moreover, hmm. the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shall thou and thy son be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. You see, what does he say? Huh? Huh? The Lord will also deliver Israel uh, into the hands of the Philistine. Tomorrow, you and your sons will be with me. Huh? Imagine, can all the uh, wicked uh, and uh, evil sons of uh, uh, King Saul you see, along with him, can they uh, be with uh, Samuel? You see? Huh? And he say, huh? the Lord also shall deliver Israel into the hands of Philistines. Even all of your sons. You see, he says, all of your sons shall die. And tomorrow everybody shall die. Dear brethren, if actually this was the real dead Samuel that came back to life, if this was the real prophet Samuel that was dead and who came back to life, then this prophecy of uh, Samuel should have been 100% true. But was it true if you see in the Bible? We need to check it from the Bible. For the Bible, which is the dictionary? Tell me. For the Bible? Bible is the dictionary. If Bible. you have any question from the Bible, we should we search the answer? We should search the answer from the Bible itself, not outside the Bible. So if you see... If this prophecy was fulfilled or not, we need to check it. So, we need to see what happened in the war. Dear brethren, if you see, actually, uh, that uh, this war actually took place. As told by, you see, Prophet Samuel. But not all of his sons were dead. One of his sons was alive. Let us read 1 Samuel 31.6. Most of brother can read 1 Samuel 31.6. So Saul died and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men that same day together. See, how many sons? Three sons. Not all his sons, but all his men died. But not all of his sons. What did Dr. Samuel say? All of you and your sons. You and your sons. You see, you shall be with me. That means you shall also be dead. But uh, uh, did they really die? You see, it says only three of his sons died. One of his sons was alive. He actually ruled for two years. Read 1 Samuel 2 1, brother. 1 Samuel 2 10, brother. 1 Samuel 2 10. Hmm. Sorry, 2 Samuel 2 10. Please forgive. 2 Samuel 2 10. Isabos, uh, Isaboset, Saul's son was 40 years old when he began to reign over Israel and reign two years but the house of Judah followed David. See, he ruled for how many years? Sir? Two years, Rebutran. He ruled actually for two years after the death of King Saul. Then, where was the prophecy fulfilled? He was never fulfilled. Actually, during the days of uh, David only that he was killed. And after his death only, who ruled? David ruled. Therefore, if you see, many prophecies are given in the Bible. Many prophets of the Lord, they prophesied. 
How did they prophesy? They did not prophesy 70%, 80%, 90% truth. They prophesied 100 out of 100% truth. It got fulfilled even to the exact fraction also, dear brother. Not even a hairline was missed in the prophecies. That was a prophecy of the God's holy prophets. It was not only for a partial, dear brother. It was a 100% fulfillment. Like, for example, Jezebel. You see, Jezebel actually killed Naboth. And Naboth, when he was stoned and killed, what happened? The dogs came and licked his blood. You know, what did Elijah, the prophet say? Elijah said, that as, you see, the dogs are licking the blood of Naboth in this place, in Jezreel. Similarly, in the same place, exactly in the same place, the dogs will come and lick water, your blood. It exactly was fulfilled, even to the point, dear brother. She was thrown by her own servants from the little, and uh, she died, and uh, the blood came out gushing from her body, and the dogs came and licked her. This was the God's holy prophets, how they spoke. They spoke the truth. And once they spoke the truth, dear brother, this was fulfilled exactly to the point, dear brother. Therefore, actually, here also, if you see, this was actually not a true prophet of uh, a God, the Samuel who came back to life because King Saul never saw him. It was a witchcraft who told some description and all, and based on him, based on it, he guessed it, dear brother. Okay, and uh, then how can the dead people speak and how can he foretell what is going to happen in the future? Yes, we can foretell. There's nothing so great about foretelling the future, dear brother. Like, for example, when each and every country, if they come, to, if they in 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 each and every country, if a uh, political party come to the power, they actually plan five-year plan. You see, in India, we have the five-year plan, dear brethren. Yeah, once a, a party comes into power, they put a budget for the five-year next five-year. What is going to happen? They forecast it. You see, they plan it, and uh, they spend. Uh, accordingly as per the budget only. Yeah, but then this is the plan. And if you see, almost 90% goes on as per the budget. So similarly, if you see, uh, in our day-to-day -day life, uh, uh, can we predict our future for tomorrow? Yes, we can predict. That's not a great issue. Dear brother. So tomorrow, if I ask uh, what is going to happen to you in your life, uh, what is going to, what are going to uh, you tell? You see, if somebody asked me, what is going to be your uh, uh, tomorrow's life, uh, if you sell, I will tell uh, almost 90%. Uh, you see, I'll tell morning uh, 7 o'clock, I'll wake up and uh, I'll get ready and I'll take my son to school and drop him and come by uh, 8.30 and get ready. I'll drop sister to the school. Then from there, I'll go to the office uh, by 10 o'clock. Then uh, 6.30, I'll leave the office and come to the home by 7.30, 7.45 and 8 o'clock, I'll start the class. At 9, 9.30, I finish the class, have some fellowship with the brethren. Then 10 o'clock, I'll have my dinner. Then uh, 10.30, I'll uh, start uh, uh, reading some uh, uh, Bible and uh, some uh, make some studies. Then I'll sleep around uh, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. This is my, you see, I predicted uh, tomorrow's uh, life. What is going to happen in my lifestyle, you see, the brethren? And that is going to fulfill almost 90 to 80%. That doesn't mean that we become a prophet, the brethren. We all predict small, small things in our life. See, immediately, here also, you see, everybody knew that uh, God has left a uh, king's soul. And moreover, uh, the devil himself knew that uh, who has left a uh, soul. Uh, God has left. Uh, then if he goes to war, what will happen? Uh, naturally, that uh, it is a natural thing that uh, he is going to lose the war. Uh, and this is uh, was a well-known thing for uh, King Saul also. And Satan repeated the same thing. That's all. He's nothing great. And uh, the, therefore, they, then uh, how did uh, the woman saw a dead person coming back to life? They, then the Satan, the god of this world, uses all this uh, means to prove that dead are not really dead. He tries to bring, bring back the same dead-like persons. Not the dead persons, but the dead-like persons. How? How is it possible if you see? Yes, is it possible? Yeah, but then today we have this uh, hologram technology. You see, today what you're what you seeing in this photo is a hologram. 
Hologram is actually a device which we put it on our body. We can put it on a gadget or anything like that. And once you switch it on, uh, a picture comes to next to us on the right side. It actually personifies exactly our real image. But it's not a real image. It's a, a fake image. But it will be exactly like the real image. And it will look alike. So this technology, we have it today. Even the laser technology, the beam, the picture on the sky in the dark. So using the lasers and the technology is there today in the world. But uh, Satan is the god of this world. He has all this technology even with him before. You see, all these things, we knew it. So Satan is using all this mechanism, the audio, video, visual effect to prove that the dead are actually not dead at all. Okay, so this proof, so this one, see, this uh, incident of uh, uh, dead uh, Samuel coming back to uh, life and speaking can't be used as a proof to prove that a uh, soul doesn't die. So, you see, uh, this is clear proof, this is the work of the devil, this is not the work of the Lord. So, dead are actually dead and Satan is trying to prove his lie. Okay, so let us now come to the second point. Okay. Uh, Ashish brother, Mausam brother has uh, exited. Can you just try to call him if you don't mind? No, no, no. Okay, so now let us come to the second point. Uh, Krishna brother, so yes. the second point is that in the Mount of Transfiguration, you see, uh, along with Jesus, you see, Moses and Elia were found. See, Moses and Elia were found. If the dead are actually dead, uh, they're not going to be raised till the second coming of Jesus. How did Moses and Elia come to life? Correct? Huh? So let us read the incidents. Matthew 17, chapter was 1, 2, and 3, brother. Read, brother. And after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bring them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elisa talking with him. You see, there appeared uh, unto him Moses and Elia talking to him. If uh, dead are really dead, how can Moses and Elia come and uh, speak to Jesus? Correct. Uh, how did he come up? You see, until the second coming of Jesus, none of the dead can come back to life. Then how did this uh, two person come back to life and uh, speak to Jesus and, and all the disciples saw it now? How? How is it possible? Huh? What is the meaning of this one? So many people use this as a proof to say that uh, as soon as a man dies, his soul goes here and there and all. Huh? Dear brethren, we need to study the Bible. See, we are taught how to study the Bible first class now. How to study the Bible? Read the context completely. Don't come to the conclusion just by one verse. The answer for this is given in verse 9. Let us read verse 9. Read, brother. Krishna, brother, verse 9, read. And <laughs> as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be raised again from the dead. See, tell the vision to no man. So what... Uh, the disciples saw here was actually what? A vision. What is the meaning of vision? Is a vision a real thing? Eh? Is vision a real thing, Mother Krishna Mother? No, sir. No, vision is never a real thing. You see, eh? we have seen the vision of Daniel. Eh? Daniel, second chapter, we've seen a vision, no? Eh? Where uh, King saw a multi metallic image, a stone came and hit the image. And uh, Daniel 7 chapter, four beasts came out of the sea. Are all these things real? No, dear Bhutan. This is a vision. You see, similarly, what God showed to them was also a vision. It is not a real thing. Okay. See, huh? even I also saw Moses in my vision. You know, which vision? Eh? Television. You see, you, you, you can also see, you want to see Joseph, you want to see Daniel, huh? you want to see Jeremiah, 
we can see all the prophets how on what uh, television uh -huh. so uh, so vision is a different thing in those days uh, technology was not there so only vision no television so today what we have tv we have television therefore the brain the vision is never a real thing so actually what uh, god showed to the disciples was actually a vision this is got actually meaning okay elisha represents the class of people while moses represents the class of people okay the lifestyle of uh, lifestyle of uh, elia uh, and what all things he did you see all these things uh, have got a beautiful lesson which we're going to see in the coming days but for now let us try to understand that this is not a literal statement this is not a direct statement but this is a vision okay brother krishna brother clear yes yes sir yes, yes okay now let us go to the third point okay now what is the third point uh, okay the third point is you see the thief on the cross you see huh? what happened to the thief on the cross where did he go krishna brother tell me paradise ah uh, he went to paradise so many people think that uh, the thief went uh, huh, the same day to paradise let us read brother uh, luke 23 43 brother luke 23 43 and brother and jesus said unto him verily i say unto thee today today shalt thou be with me in paradise you see very verily i say unto thee today shall thou be with me in paradise so because of this is a many believe that today itself the very day itself, the thief went to huh, heaven with our lord he went to the paradise with our lord jesus christ dear brethren how can he go the very same day to paradise how can he go because jesus was dead and was buried huh, for how many days how many days was jesus in the grave Three days. Three days. Then Jesus was resurrected on the third day. Then how can the thief huh, can go to the paradise on the same day? Correct, no? Huh? If Jesus himself has uh, awakened from the dead on the third day, how can the thief go to paradise on the same day of his death? Correct, no? Huh? We need to think, no? I mean, what is the meaning of this one, dear brethren? And moreover, many people think that, uh, you see, even at the last moment of our death, if we confess all our sins, the Lord will forgive all our sins and will take back to heaven. You see, that's what uh, many people believe that uh, uh, if, we, if we confess our sins just before our death, uh, we will go to uh, heaven. Uh, how? You see, the thief, uh, thief, thief on the cross, uh, he went to heaven now similarly. Huh? Dear brethren, did uh, the thief on the cross ask forgiveness from the Lord? Did he ask uh, huh, the Lord to forgive all his sins? Did he ask brother, Krishna brother? No. No. The thief on the cross never asked for forgiveness. Uh, you see, you can't, uh, we can't go to heaven so easily on the bed of roses. Just by confessing our sin at the last moment, we can't go to heaven. If we were supposed to go to heaven at the last moment, then why do we need to study the Bible? Let us close the Bible, go enjoy in the world. Because anyway, in the last moment, we're going to go to huh? we're going to go to heaven now. So let us confess our sins at the last moment. So why, why take tension? That is not what the Bible says. The Bible says that uh, through much tribulation. You should enter the kingdom of God. Read with Max Acts 14 22 with Acts 14 22. Hmm. Confirming the soul of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must throw much tribulation into, into the have kingdom of God. See, okay. through much tribulation, through much tribulation, we need to enter the kingdom of God. We can't go to heaven on the bed of roses, Stephen, just by confessing our sin. At the last moment, uh, we need to work out a salvation. Moreover, uh, the thief also did not ask him to take him to paradise. He said what? Uh, he said only one thing. Lord, remember me when thou come in thy kingdom. Correct? Huh? Read. What's 42, brother? Huh? 
And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest in into thy kingdom. See, you know, see, it was a simple question. You see, simple request of the thief. He said, Lord, please remember me when you come into thy kingdom. Now you see, what is the best answer we can give? If somebody tells, brother, please remember me, what will we tell? Huh? What would be our answer? If somebody requests us to remember them, what will we tell? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, sure. we will. Yes, sure, brother, we will remember you. That's yeah. what we say, no? So similarly, here also, huh? the thief asked him to remember. You, know, you see, the best answer of a Lord would have been, okay, I will remember. But instead of telling these words, you know what our Lord said? The Lord said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, eh? Today shall thou be with me in paradise. So many people think that, uh, you see, that Jesus promised him to come with uh, him to heaven. Actually, no. That is actually a slight misunderstanding of us in the verse. How is it? If you see actually, then there is actually a small punctuation mark that is a causing a small mistake in this verse. Actually, uh, how, if you see, uh, the word uh, today is uh, actually placed, uh, uh, you see, after the comma. Uh, if you see these two comparison, there is a difference uh, in the punctuation mark. The first is what, as we see in the Bible, it says, Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. That's what is given in the Bible. What is the meaning of this one? He says, Today only, today only you will come with me in paradise. That's what it means. But uh, if we put the comma after today and read, the meaning itself is totally changed. The meaning itself is totally changed. How? Read, brother. Read, brother. Uh, Krishna, read the, read the second one. Yes, second one. Mm. Yeah, and Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee today, shall thou be with me in paradise. See, verily I say unto thee today, shall thou be with me in paradise. You see, the meaning itself is totally changed. Actually, this is what has happened. Jesus was trying to say that, Verily I say unto thee today, today I am telling you, Today itself, I am telling you, you shall be with me in paradise. Sir. When? Not now. When I return in my kingdom. That's what you asked now. Lord, please remember me when you return in the kingdom. Yes, I will remember you. Okay. I am saying that one to you today itself. I am promising you today itself. When I return back, I will definitely remember you. You see, that slight punctuation mark has changed the entire meaning. Therefore, you see, Actually, the comma should come after today, not before today. Uh, a small word can definitely change the entire uh, context of that uh, verse itself. Like for example, what did uh, God say to Adam? That you shall not uh, eat the fruit uh, thereof. If you eat the fruit thereof, what will happen? You shall die. die. Surely die. Yes, you shall surely die. But what did Satan tell? You shall surely not not die. See, the so small word not. When it was added, the entire meaning changed. Uh -huh. This is what Satan is trying to do here also. Actually, you see, I'll tell you a story. There was a judge, it seems. He once uh, gave a, a degree, a punishment uh, uh, to a culprit, a criminal. He said, uh, he gave a, this an order saying, uh, Kill him, comma, not spare him. While uh, the typist was typing down, instead of putting the comma, huh, after him, he put uh, the comma huh, after not. That means, what did the judge say? Kill him, comma, not spare him. That means kill him, don't spare him. But a typist, while he was typing it, uh, he put the comma after not. You see, the entire meaning changed. 
How did it change? It says, kill him not. Kill him not. Spare him. You see, dear brother, just a comma made an entire difference. One verse told that you kill him, but the other sentence is means that you should let him free. Therefore, dear brethren, this is what happened here. Actually, in the original Bible, the chapter division, the verse division are actually not found in the original Bible at all. This verse division and chapter division was made by Cardinal Caro and Robert Stephenson in 1551 AD. It is only after this one only that punctuation marker came into the picture. Dear brethren. Therefore, this uh, is actually uh, not what our Lord said. He said he was promising the thief that day itself that he would be with him in paradise. What is the meaning of paradise? You see, dear brethren, everybody thinks that paradise means heaven. Everybody thinks that paradise means heaven. But is it given in the Bible that it is heaven? No, it is not given in the Bible that it is a heaven. And what is the meaning of paradise? We need to search from the Bible. For the Bible, what is the dictionary, brother? Which is the dictionary? Krishna, brother, for the Bible, which is the dictionary? Bible itself, sir. Yes, Bible itself is a dictionary, isn't it? So, from the Bible, we need to check it. What's the meaning? Huh? You see, Paradise, huh? let us read about paradise in Revelation 2 7, brother. Revelation 2 7, brother. Huh? Mosul, brother, welcome yeah. back. Hope yeah, you yeah. had some uh, yeah. network disturbance there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, brother. Yeah, due to electricity cut. So, <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I'll Sorry. send you the recording. Uh, just your two, three points, you missed it. I'll send you the recording. Please uh, recreate it later, brother. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Okay. Revelation 2 7, brother. Huh? He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcome will I give to it of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Okay. The tree of life in the middle of the paradise of the God. So, in the paradise of God, in the middle of the paradise of God, what is there, Isimsa? Which tree is there? Tell me, which tree? What is the name of the tree? Tree of life. Tree of life. Correct now, Krishna, brother? Yes, sir. Huh? Did you observe it? Read it once again if you want. Read it once again. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcome will I give to it the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Tree of life in the middle of paradise of God. Now you tell me, was there any tree of life before this one? Is it given in the Bible that there was a tree of life in any garden? Is it given in the Bible? Huh? Krishna Badar, Mosam Badar. Is yes. it mentioned in the Bible? Huh? Yes. Yeah, in Genesis. Very good. Book of Genesis. Very good. Read Genesis 2 9. Read, brother. Huh? And out of the garden, ground made the, lo made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden uh -huh. and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You see, the tree of life also in the middle of garden. Correct, huh? Now, where was the tree of life? In the middle of? Where? Middle of? Garden, sir. Garden. So, in Revelation, what did you see? In the middle of? Paradise. Actually, that word paradise means, you know what? Uh, in Greek, paradise means paradios. That word is from the Greek word paradios. Paradios means a park. Eden Garden was a beautiful park, dear brethren. When Christ is going to return at the second coming, he is going to establish his kingdom on the earth. You know, when his kingdom is going to be established on his earth, what is going to happen? You see, the beautiful earth is going to be like a 
garden of eden the entire world will be like eden that is what jesus promised to the thief when i will return you see i will establish my kingdom on this earth you told me to remember in my kingdom now yes i am going to come at the second advent and establish my kingdom on this earth when i return i'll definitely remember you so god is going to give some special favor to the thief and not that he is going to take them to heaven dear brother so this can't be taken as a proof to prove that as soon as a man die he goes to you see huh? heaven or hell okay so this can't be taken as a proof now let us come to the next point next point is huh? first peter 318 brother first peter 318 brother read brother huh? Muslim brother, you are there. First Peter three eighteen. Hmm. For Christ also had one suffer for sins, the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but weakened by the Spirit. Hmm. Continue. Continue. Uh, uh, read from the Bible. Read from the Bible. Uh. I'm uh, a bit outside now, brother. Okay. Krishna, brother, can you read? Yes. Okay, read? sir. Uh, continue. Oh. Yes. I'm going to read from 19, okay? Mm. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. See? By which also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. So many people think that uh, these are the dead souls uh, who are kept in prison. Huh? Jesus, before uh, uh, going to heaven, he went and preached to them. Yeah? Everybody thinks that these are dead souls. Huh? What is the meaning of this one? The meaning is given there itself. Let us continue to read. Who are these uh, spirits? Let us read. Brother. Continue, brother. Read, brother. Huh? Which sometimes sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah huh? while the ark was uh, preparing wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water. You see these were the spirits who were disobedient during the days of Noah. You tell me who is the spirits who were disobedient during the days of Noah. Is it human beings or uh, is it uh, evil spirit the fallen angels? Tell me is it human beings or the fallen angels? Fallen angels also. Fallen angels only. These are called as the spirits in the Bible. You see, dear brethren, we read now about evil spirits in the Christ first advent, devils, possessed. And these are actually the influence of the fallen angels, dear brethren. See, these fallen angels are the ones who committed sin during the days of Noah. That's what is given there. It says, huh? Who were disobedient during the days of Noah? Who are these spirits? It doesn't say these are dead souls. It says dead spirits. It says these are the spirits. So these are the spirits, the fallen angels, who when the flood came, they escaped from their, you see, as a fleshly body into the spiritual body. And where are they? They are bound captive in the earth's atmosphere, dear brethren. Therefore, it says now, Ephesians 2 2. Now, who is the prince of the power of the air? Where is where is Satan ruling from? Hmm? Read, brother. Krishna, brother, read. Ephesians 2 2. Yes, read, brother. Uh, read. I'm sourcing. Hmm. No problem. New Bible, no? No problem, no problem, no problem. We'll wait. Okay. Mm. Uh, wherein in time past year work according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now work in the children of disobedience. See, the prince of the power of the air. Correct, no? The spirit, uh, evil spirit. Underline. Evil spirit uh, that now worketh in children of disobedient. So, it is an evil spirit who is working in the disobedient people. That's the reason we you know what happened. When God withdraw his spirit from king's soul, automatically what came in? Evil spirit. God permitted it. Okay? When, when Bible says that God sent it, 
what does it mean god permitted it until such time god had stopped it because saul was obedient once uh, saul was disobedient god withdraw his support dear brethren therefore you see what does he say man the prince of the power of air he is ruling invisibly from the earth atmosphere dear brethren these are the he will spirit to these he will spirit the fallen angels jesus preached how did jesus preach dear brethren jesus did not uh, huh? prepare a subject and go and preach to them jesus lifestyle was itself a preaching to them you see jesus was also in heaven before he came to the earth the angels were also in heaven before they came to the earth in the first world but when the first world when the angels came what did they do you see they sinned against god by marrying with the daughters of uh, uh, men they were beautiful they had relationship children were born but jesus when he came to this earth he was in the flesh okay but did he commit sin did jesus commit any sin tell me no no, no. he did not have a relationship with anyone okay all these things the angels saw jesus sacrificed everything was obedient to god until death isn't it jesus did not open his mouth at all he was very silent all these things was a great lesson for the fallen angels oh if we are obedient god will also bless us you know after death of jesus on the cross what did god do god resurrected him to the divine nature so the angels also if they are faithful you see they are also promised what da huh they are also promised to be taken back to god this is the lesson this is the sermon the lifestyle of jesus itself was a great lesson to whom the fallen angels okay so how did jesus preach to the fallen angels by practically showing his lifestyle okay let us read one verse brother most of brother read first corinthians 4 9 for i think that god has set forth us the apostle last as it were appointed to death for we are made a spectacle spectacle unto the world and to angels to men you see god has uh, made as a spectacle unto the angels and to the world the angels are seeing mankind and learning a beautiful lesson they brother how to be obedient if you are obedient what will the prize we god is going to give us therefore this can't be taken as a proof to prove that uh, you see the dead uh, uh, souls go here and there and all they have run uh, that uh, uh, jesus is not going to preach to the dead souls it says uh, he went and preached to the spirits not souls the spirits in prison okay now let us read uh, uh, the last uh, thing about uh, matthew 27 chapter 52 and 53 Matthew 27 chapter 52 and 53 brother ha huh? uh, read brother Matthew 27 chapter 52 and 53 hmm. and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the grave after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many mm. thank you brother so it says the graves were opened and the bodies came out and uh, went into the holy city and appeared to many we are already clearly seen that after that there is nothing then how come these dead people came out from the graves and showed to many people eh, in the holy city what is the meaning of this one dear brethren we all know that jesus was the first and the last person to be resurrected all the persons are going to be resurrected only at the second advent now what is the meaning of this one who are the dead people who came out from the grave we need to search from the bible see jesus died on the cross you see he died on the mount what is the name of the mount if you see it is called as mount golgotha what is the meaning of uh, verse uh, words golgotha 
do you do you know what is the meaning of golgotha place of skull place of the skull correct matthew 27 33 it comes okay why it is called as a place of the skull if you see from far on that mount there is to be small small caves as you can see in the photo here from the far if you see it looks like in the form of a skull is it man skull here on hole here on hole here on hole see similarly from the far if you see this golgotha will be having lot of holes those holes are actually caves in those caves in the days of our lord the lepers were living there why lepers were living there because leprosy was a contaminating disease it was very fast spreading nobody was allowed to come inside the city as per the law they were supposed to live outside the city so where would they live they all lived in this cave ha huh? that is below golgotha dear brethren and that is the time that uh, actually these people came out it is actually speaking about these people these were treated as a dead people they were never allowed in such a society now you see naman you all know the story of naman yeah yes naman yes. he had the leprosy he dipped in river jordan for seven times he was cured they were all isolated they were not allowed in such a city even uh, jesus uh, he did lot of miracles no on the way when he was coming 10 lepers came and uh, shouted for uh, uh, mercy just lord have mercy on us uh, they were outside the city not inside the city they were never allowed inside jesus told go and show to the high priest dear brethren that's what jesus said no go and to show it to the high priest why high priest because the priest has to certify if a leprosy is cured or not who has to certify as per the law in the leviticus book of leviticus the high priest has to certify whether you need to go to the home or not you see so jesus told that one let us read that one brother matthew 8 chapter verse 3 and 4 matthew 8 chapter verse 3 and 4 brother and jesus put forth his hand and touched his his him saying i will be do clean and immediately his leprosy was clean and jesus said unto him see do tell no man but go the way so they themselves to the priest and offer the gift of the moses commanded for a testimony unto him you see go to the priest huh? and show him and offer sacrifices as per moses commandment you see now where will the priest be where where, where usually the priest will be found where can we find the priest in in israel temple temple very good now where is the temple jerusalem very good and what is the uh, jerusalem called as holy city. holy city yes therefore if you see matthew 27 chapter it says these uh, uh, lepers who were living uh, below this golgotha in the caves you know they were cured at the death of our lord how if you see dear brethren when jesus died on the cross he was bleeding his body was completely wounded we all know that when jesus died on the cross there was a very uh, darkness that covered the entire earth for nearly 3 hours let us read that verse brother matthew 2745 brother matthew 2745 brother can somebody read matthew 2745 Krishna brother can now, read. No. Oh. No, from the 6th hour there was a darkness over all the land unto the 9th hour. Ah, so so from 6th hour to 9th hour means afternoon 12 pm to 3 pm. Imagine a very dark cloud means next what is going to come? Huge rain is going to come. So that's what has happened when Jesus died, earthquake happened, the veil of the temple shook. you see god showed his anger in the form of earthquake in the form of a thunderstorm and a rain you see in the rain the blood of jesus was mixed and uh, it came and fell on the lepers who were living in the uh, caves you see and those caves were considered as graves in the bible because you see 
during the days of Jesus, you know, how was the grave? Let us read. Matthew 27, 60. Matthew 27, 60, brother. Can uh, read, brother. Hmm. And led it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the speculars and departed. See, how was the grave? How was the sepulcher during those days? It was heaven from the rock. It was like a cave. So similarly, these uh, uh, caves were also considered as graves because uh, these persons were treated as dead for the society. So the blood came and fell upon them. You know, we all know what was the power of uh, Jesus Christ. A woman touched the border of uh, Jesus' cloth. Immediately she was healed. That was the power of our Lord Jesus. Jesus has so much of power. Imagine his blood mixed with water. If it would have touched the leprosy, immediately what would have happened? All the lepers were cured. Hence, after the resurrection of Christ, they came out and they realized that they were totally cured. They went in the holy city and showed to many. Why holy city? Because the priest lives in the holy city, Jerusalem. They wanted to offer sacrifice, get certificate from him and go to the houses. Hence, dear brethren, this can't be taken as a proof to prove that the dead go to uh, here and there. This all things clearly prove that the soul dies. So all these things we have checked and inquired, we studied. So next week, uh, we are going to study one important subject. That is the uh, rich man and Lazarus. Uh, you all know the story of rich man and Lazarus, no? Rich man. Yes, uh, ah, yes. You see, both the people were alive. Huh? Only you done nicely. One was a poor beggar. Mosem brother, you know this story now? Huh? Yes, see? brother. I uh, know. So both the people died. One went to where? Hell. Huh? Another went to? Abraham. Abraham or oh, something. Uh, so we'll see all those things in the next week. Okay? So any doubts, any questions if you have, you can ask.